Okay, that's good. I will share my screen again. So everybody can see my screen now, right? Good. So yes, so first episode of our wastewater talk is about rat control in the drainage systems. So I, I assume that most of you already have already seen this post. Yes, we think wastewater is an issue that we need to discuss and talk about. So every month we will bring a new topic and a new seminar. So we will discuss about all these topics in the wastewater. And, and, also, and also exchange our knowledge in the wastewater. Besides that, we also want to share our passion with you. Um, sorry, can, can, can you mute yourself first when I'm talking? Just uh, for a better understanding for everybody. Thank you. So more, most importantly, we also want to know you, all the like-minded people in every country all around the world. If you have already uh, followed Klaus In or Unitechnics, then you might already know that we also have an Abwasser talk. This is another um, webinar made by Unitechnics, but it's in German. So every two weeks, we'll bring a new topic. And if you are interested in it, and maybe you can also understand, understand German, then you can uh, go to podcast or uh, Spotify to have a look. Oh. Yeah, so here we have an overview of our webinar plan for the next eight episodes. The first one is today, is red control in drainage systems. And after this one, we will make a webinar at every first Thursday in a month and at 10 o'clock. So next month at 2nd December, we will talk about the drainage system inspection with special focus on the drone and boat. So first, I would like to have a short introduction of, of Unitechnics. So since uh, we are an engineering company based in Germany, so this company is established since 1990. And at first, we mainly offer the engineering consulting services. And in 2000, Oh, I'm sorry for this disturbing. I try to meet all the guests. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, your name, but uh, could you mute so that everybody can understand what I'm talking now? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so I will go on. Um, since 2000, we also start developing and producing the products against odor and corrosion in the sewer systems. So here is a range of products and services we offer at Unitechnics. Uh, besides the engineering consulting, we also investigate for the indirect discharger in a given region or a city. We also inspect the sewer systems with drone and camera boats. This is all, also the topic of, of next month. We developed a software called Sufidus to calculate the sulfide balance in our sewer systems. Also, we have products against odor, corrosion, and extraneous water. And according to the special request from customers, we can also design the dosing systems and exhaust air treatment. And last but not the least, today we will talk about the rat control in the sewers. We also have products against this. So about the rats, the rats, we can see them maybe everywhere near our sewers. They could be searching food or playing in the broken pipes. Yeah, everywhere, and even maybe doing yoga in our sewers. So 
it's kind of a really serious problem and the war against the rats is on. So in the past, um, maybe people don't know so much about the rats, but now nowadays we with knowledge, we now know that the rats are the pathogen carriers that could carry so many uh, bacteria or viruses, viruses. And with their movement in the sewers or in the cities, they could spread these diseases, diseases everywhere. They could also be a source of allergens uh, with their droppings or hairs or the food or the water that, being con that, that has been contaminated by them. <clears throat> also, when we talk about the rats in a bigger picture, like not just in the sewers, they could also weaken the building structures when they digging holes or making some tunnels in the buildings. So now I have a quiz for all of you. Which kind of rodent species are allowed to be controlled in Germany? So since we are, our company is based in Germany, so we focus more about the rodent control in Germany. So you can have a guess how many species or which kind of species, if you know, are allowed to be controlled in Germany. Does anybody have an idea? Okay, then I will ju just give you the answer. So actually, all the mammals are fundamentally granted special protection status in Germany, which means they're not allowed to be controlled. But some rodent species are exempt from this protection. And all in all, there are seven species, the house mouse, brown rat, black rat, water vole, bank vole, field vole, and field mouse. So the, brat, the brown rat is actually the most common thing rat in our sewer systems. All in these seven species are allowed to be controlled in Germany, which means you can use um, all the countermeasures against them, but all the other species are not allowed. They're protected by the law. So what kind of countermeasures we have against the rats? The most simple, the easiest way and the way that everybody can do is that never flush food into the toilets since they will, the food will uh, later get into the sewer and they will become a food source for the rats. Also, we can use the rat proof or closed manhole cover so that the entrance and exit of the rats, rats get into and out of the sewers will be closed. Also, we can use the rat trap, rat trap and some products specially designed for the sewers to stop the rats moving in the, in the drainage, drainage pipes. The mostly used now is the Baits, which is uh, poisonous by uh, to the rats. So what actually is this kind of bait? It's actually called anticoagulant rodenticides. They're poisonous and they're mostly used in European Union market. Since they're poisonous, the authorization of this rodenticides is according to the biocidal, biocidal products regulation number 528, 2012. And the use of this kind of rodenticides is under strict mitigation, uh, risk mitigation measures. So what kind of effects does this rodenticides have and what kind of types are there? So all in all, there are two types of rodenticides, first generation and second generation. The first generation is tend to be less toxic and they are not tend to be accumulate, accumulate in the organisms. And since they are less toxic, uh, in order to reach a lethal effect, we need multiple dose of it. And the second generation is more toxic and tend to be um, accumulate in the organisms and less degradable. So only single take is enough. So after, uh, so this um, anticoagulant rodenticides actually contain the blood cl clotting inhibitors, which is also called anticoagulants. And after the ingestion of this rodenticides, it will cause a loss of the blood clotting ability in the rats, which eventually the rat will die um, from the internal bleeding. And this effect will start three to seven days after the first ingestion, which is designed to make sure that the rat won't, con won't connect the ingestion of the bait with the uh, poisonous e effect. In another way, it's called no bait shyness. So since they're poisonous, there's a very strict authorization procedure. 
The first step is that these active substances, which is anti anticoagulants, need to be approved at a European Union level with an environmental risk assessment. After it is being approved by the European Union, the um, biocidal products, which is the rodenticides, we need to be get another approval at national level associated with another environmental risk assessment. So since we know that this anticoagulants is persistent, which means they are uh, less degradable, and they are bioaccumulative, which means they were accumulated in our organisms, in our bodies, and they are toxic. So release of these substances into the environment is strictly forbidden. And also we discovered that they have unacceptable un effects on the environment. So actually the conditions of this uh, anticoagulant rodenticides doesn't really meet the standard of, of an authorization. But why we still get it approved? It because we can't really find another alternatives that has equally effect, uh, equally effect with the anticoagulants, but less harmful. So we have to use these substances. So the anticoagulants actually get the first approval in European Union from 2010 to 2012. And uh, it's different from the normal substances that have uh, approval period for 10 years, the anticoagulants only have a shorter per approval period for five years, which means after each five years, it needs to be reauthorized uh, and if necessary, re-evaluated. Also, the use of this uh, anticoagulants is under uh, strict risk mitigation measures. So what kind of environmental risks are there with the use of anticoagulants? Since the blood clotting mechanisms is similar in mammals and also the birds, so they have a really high risks to the wildlife, especially to the owls, to the buzzards, or to foxes, or the animals that could um, feed on the rodents in the forest. So there are two kinds of uh, poisoning of the non-target animals. The primary one is that the non-target animals will feed directly on these baits. And the secondary one is that they feed on the poisoned rodents. And the secondary poisoning, poisoning is really, uh, has really um, strong adverse effects and it, can't not, it cannot be avoided, but only be minimized. So uh, there's uh, research conducted by the German Ministry of Environment. Uh, it's called the systematic analysis of residues of, of anticoagulants in wild animals in Germany. So it found that the residues of anticoagulants has been detected in several small mammals, such as wood mice or shrews, which are not our target animals, as well as in the owls or birds of prey. Also, the residues of anticoagulants has been found in 61% of liver samples collected from 265 foxes. So we found that the ingestion of the anticoagulants, not by, um, uh, not by perils, has the long-term effects on the behavior and reproduction of these non-target animals, and eventually it, also, it could also cause the death of them. So another uh, research is, fo uh, is focused on the environmental risks of anticoagulants on the aquatic life. It's called residues of anticoagulant rod rodenticides in freshwater fish from various large watercourses in Germany. So uh, I also put the website of this research here, which you can uh, go on the website and, and take a look. You can see there are several sampling area, including the Rhine River, the Donau River and Elbe. Also uh, under the, under the um, menu, you can find the biocides and plant protection products under which there's a rodenticide, which includes the, con includes the um, substances we use to control against uh, mice, rats, and other rodents. And here's a list of the substances under this rodenticide menu. If you remember before about the first generation and the second generation, and all their chemical compounds or ingredients of the sub substances, here we have all of them. And when you click into it, you can see the, the data of it. 
So in this research, we found out that there's a widespread of second generation anticoagulant rodenticides in fish from large watercourses in Germany. And at least one of the second generation anticoagulant rodenticides was detected in every fish sample from the 16 rural sampling, sampling sites across Germany. And one of these uh, second generation anticoagulant rodenticides, the Brodifacum, was detected in almost 90% of the 18 exempt fish liver samples. So even though that we didn't really find acute effects of the um, anticoagulants on the anticoagulant rodenticides on the aquatic life, there is still a threat to the higher aquatic organisms and top predators, which could be us, the human, via the aquatic food chain. And uh, through another research, it has been determined that the sewer baiting contributes to the release of anticoagulant rodenticides into the aquatic environment. So how does this happen? First, the active ingredients in the, bait, in the baits will leach into the wastewater when it gets contact into the wastewater or the stormwater. And then through the conventional wastewater treatment method, this kind of anticoagulants won't be removed totally, and eventually they will, discharge, will be discharged into the surface water and pollute the aquatic environment. And according to this, uh, and the European Union law and other regulations has been uh, has stated that the baits must not come into contact with water and not be washed away in the sewers. So now I have another quiz for all of you. How many bait material containing anticoagulant rodenticides are used annually in Germany for rat control and it's only in the sewers? You can have a guess how, how many or which unit you would think that has been used. So does anybody has an idea of that? No idea? Okay, I will just view the answer. It's actually over 600 tons. And when we think about this 600 tons of rodenticides, and it has only been used for the rat control in sewers in Germany, so we can kind of imagine how much of this anticoagulants has been discharged into our water, uh, water courses and has been accumulated by the fish and eventually come onto our table. So in general, when we use the rodenticide baits, we always use it intensively and permanently and also in large quantities based on the false assumption that the rest can be uh, everywhere in our sewer systems and we use it at, at every other manhole in the sewer network. So because of this, now uh, we, are we, we, are, we are asked to have a mandatory pre-baiting survey before any rodenticide control campaign. First, we need to install and check the non-toxic baits at selected manholes in the sewers. And this regularly checking can be realized by uh, manual checking or by the techniques. So we use the sensors and this data will be transferred to our phone or to our computer and we can uh, check it at any time we want. And after this regular checking, we will see if there's an uptake of the non-toxic baits we will then replace this non-toxic one into the anticoagulant rodenticides, the toxic, the toxic one. And at the end of this pre-baiting survey, if we see the infestation is already eliminated or there's no further uptake um, documented, we can, we can remove the anticoagulant rodenticides and replace it again by the non-toxic one. So the general procedure of rat control in the sewers starts with a pre-baiting survey after it, we'll deploy the base in our sewers. It should be uh, installed on a wire in the manhole or in a waterproof bait station. This is, this is to ensure that the anticoagulants won't get into contact with the water. And afterwards, we need to inspect the bait points, also document the uptake of the baits initially after 14 days. And subsequently, every two to three weeks, we need to check all the bait points. 
At the end of, of this uh, rat control campaign, we need to remove all the remaining baits and, dis and dispose them as hazardous waste. So in so by law, the permanent baiting is not permitted in the sewer systems. So now we have uh, in Germany or by, at Winitechnics, we have developed a uh, rat bowl, which is our solution against the rat control in the sewers and also to ensure that there won't be any uh, contact of the anticoagulants with the wastewater. So it's, it's actually a waterproof baiting station. If you see, uh, look at the right side, there's uh, the mechanisms of how it works. At the bottom, we have a weight of three kilograms, which can ensure that it will stay still in the, in the, um, in the manhole in case of a backflow. And when there's a backflow coming, the whole body will swim up with the water level and sink down again when the backflow is gone. So we have a cable which we can hang on our mud trap at the top of our shaft. And also here there's a metal pieces inside which we can hang our bait. So uh, other, adver uh, 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 other advantages of this red ball is that it's very small and handy. It has a size like a football around 250 millimeters and it can be installed without uh, staff entering the shafts. We can, uh, it works against the backflow and also from the water from above. Uh, when we need, when the bait is consumed, we can also uh, quickly change the baits. Also, uh, when we need to, uh, when we finish a red control campaign in one place, we can, when we need to move to another place, we can also easily transfer this red bowl into other shafts wherever is needed. So here we have a small video showing the mechanisms of this red bull. With the backflow, it will swim up with the weight still uh, standing still under it. And when the backflow is gone, the red bull will sink down again. Yes. So uh, besides the normal version of the red bull, we also have another version that is with sensor. So like before I've mentioned that the installation and regular checking of the Red Bull can be realized by a technical method using the sensors. So with the sensor, we can first localize where, uh, where are our Red Bulls in the city and we don't need any manual inspection on site. The Red visits and also the bait changes will be locked automatically and sent by email uh, so that we know every time when there's uh, red visits or we need to change the battery of the sensor. Uh, the, trans the transmission of the signal um, doesn't require any amplifiers or any readout devices. And no matter where you are in the world, you can always receive this uh, transmission. The installation of the Red Bull is rather easy. And here we have a video for that. So first we have a box of the uh, Red Bull uh, in a set of five and we take one out and we can open this Red Bull by opening this metal bar, remove the hemisphere and hang our baits on the metal pieces. So after we fix it, we can again put back the hemisphere and fix the whole red bow with this metal bar. And then we just need to open the shaft where we need to install a red bow. So we first remove the mud trap. And the hanging cable of the red ball can be adjusted as needed. So 
So later, we just need to put the red ball in our shaft at the side of the channel. And we need to make sure that the cable is tight enough that it's hanging right above this red ball that is not um, too soft. <laughs> After placing the red ball in the right place, we will put the mud trap again back in the place and we can fix this uh, hanging cable on our mud trap. And fix it with, fix it with the lock on our mud trap. Yeah, like this, now the red ball is fixed perfectly in our shaft. And we need to make sure again, this cable is tight enough that is placed right above our red ball. So it can efficiently and effectively against the backflow. At the end, we just need to close our shaft and the installation is done. So it's very easy, very quick, and we don't need anybody to get into the shaft. Yes. So that's basically uh, the solution that we offer in Germany against the red control, uh, for the red control in our sewers. And I would also like to know what kind of red control methods are being used in the sewers in your region. So maybe you are also in Germany or you are in other countries. We would like to know about that. So if anybody would like to share about the red control methods in your area. No one? or what kind of red control methods you know about, not necessarily in your area. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit awkward for me, but, but it's good that now you know what we are doing in Germany. We use this red ball against the red in our sewer systems and to ensure that the anticoagulants won't get into the wastewater. Um, you need to check the chat. Ah, okay. Thanks. Ah, now I just see the chat. Sorry, I didn't check it. Okay, I see some gas before for the for how much uh, rodenticides has been used in our sewer systems. And you say it's much more than you thought, maybe double of your guess. Yeah, so, well, let's recap about what we discussed about uh, in the rat control in the sewer systems today. So first we talk about why rats need to be controlled as they are the pathogen, ca uh, pathogen carriers and they will uh, dis uh, spread the diseases. And also what kind of rats can be allowed to be controlled in Germany, which is seven species. And uh, when we talk about the countermeasures against the rats, we say that anticoagulant rodenticides is the mostly used in European Union market. We talk about the type, the two, uh, two generations, the first one and the second generation and also the blood, uh, blood clotting effect of the anticoagulants, um, their authorization uh, steps by the EU level and also the national level. The, the environmental risks of, oh, sorry, the environmental risks of using uh, anticoagulant rodenticides to the wildlife and to the aquatic life. And to the aquatic life, we discover that the sewer baiting is one of the contributors to it. And that's why we need to have a red control in our sewers and also have a pre-baiting before the normal procedure. After the pre-baiting, we can deploy the baits, inspect and document the bait uptake, and at the end, remove all the baits. 
At the end, I also introduced the application of the Red Bull in the sewers, which can be a really effective and efficient way and uh, safe way to uh, for the red control. Yes, so that's basically what we would like to discuss with you today about the red control topic. And I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining this webinar. It's really uh, happy to see there's uh, that uh, there are many people joining us today. And next month at 2nd December, we will discuss about the drainage system inspection using the drones and camera boats, which you can also see here. It will be really an interesting topic. So I would like to see you next month at 2nd December at 10 o'clock Central European time.